right, let's get to the Word of God because I got something to say and I want to have plenty of time to do it. These sound great, guys. You guys are doing a great job. You make some noise for the sound team. Can we do that? They always hear from us when something goes wrong, but right now everything is just wonderful. It's nice and warm because I got one more service to preach in Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Let's go there to the assignment that God has given me for you today. And uh, uh, I just believe that we're going to add something here that will just bring some value to your life. Uh, That's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. And we're just going to read down until Jesus says stop since this is the 12 o'clock service. How about that? Can we do that? Are y'all ready, 12 o'clock? To be homiletically correct, I'm saying it for the third time now. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. Amen. My homiletics teacher in Bible college would be so well pleased with me right now. All right, I'm reading New King James Version. You got another translation. It's okay. Follow on the screens, though. I'll show you something up there that you can follow along with. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away with these dumb idols. I love the way that Paul is just right in their face saying that stuff y'all was doing was dumb. Spirit of dumb all over it. Okay, I just need you to understand. However you were led, okay? Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accused. And no one says that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is giving the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another uh, uh, to another uh, uh, different kinds of tongues, and another the interpretation of tongues. But listen to this. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. I want to talk to you guys for the next couple of minutes, these 38 minutes and 17 seconds, which is much longer than I had in the first service, from the subject, auto-tuning my gift. Auto-tuning my gifts. With an S. Auto-tuning my gifts. Let's pray. And let's see if the Holy Spirit can add some value to this word that he's given me to share with you. Holy Spirit, would you breathe on this word today? In this second service, these wonderful people have made their way into this building. People are watching online. They came hungry for something from you. God, I can sense that hunger in this room. Lord, I thank you that your word declares that they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, God, they shall be filled. And so, Father, I pray for a fresh filling today, a fresh filling of your word, a fresh revelation, something that they can leave with that they did not come with. I pray, Father, that you would break the chains of the enemy off of minds and hearts in the name of Jesus. Devil, that's the sound of our foot crushing your head. You've already been defeated. You have no place in this room or online. In the name of Jesus, I just declare victory and dominion in this house even before we get into this word. In the matchless, mighty, powerful name that is above every name, the name of Jesus we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Let's go to work. Sheesh. Somebody say that when you say sheesh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Y'all sound like courageous church now. My church know what's up when I say sheesh. We about to get to work. So I, I, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. I, I don't care what side of Miami you might have grew up in. I don't care where you might have flew in from to actually move to Miami. I don't care if you're an import or an export. I don't care if you graduated summa cum laude or graduated thank the laude. I don't care... <laughs> Some of y'all are like, yeah, I was in that. Listen, I was in that, I was in that last 10%. I, I slid in. Woo, thank the Lordy. <laughs> I just, I'm just happy to get a cap and a gown. Forget all that extra stuff. Just let me walk in Jesus' name. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter where you grew up at. Doesn't matter who your mom is. Doesn't matter who your father was. None of that matters when it comes to purpose. 
Because no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter what skin tone you might walk with, no matter what accent you might carry, God created you with a purpose. God created you with a purpose before you decided to understand your purpose. God created you for a purpose before you ever decided to give your life over him, over to him so that he could lead and guide you in your purpose. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so that means that before you ever, be, before you ever behaved, you already belonged. Oh, that's good. That, that, that means that your father was already thinking about the purpose by which he designed you for before you ever showed up in the earth realm. Oh, my goodness. That, that actually speaks to a predestined a uh, 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 plan for your life that 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 actually tells me that there was a blueprint that was written in heaven about your life before you ever decided to live your life. Ah, this is good. There was already a degreed program set up for you in heaven, in heaven university that God had already downloaded for you to go through the classes of. Hello, somebody. Oh, I just made that up on the fly because I need you to understand that there was some great thought that was put into the fact of the, the purpose by which you have been created. That means that if you were created on purpose, that means that God has purpose for you. Oh, my goodness. I love that God is so amazing because in Genesis 1 and 26, we see the creation of man take place. And the Bible says, let us make man in our likeness and in our image. It'll show it to you on the screen behind me. It says, let us make man in our likeness and our image. And thank you, Holy Spirit. I didn't even get this in the first service. You, if you jump over to Genesis chapter 2, you see the formation of man. You see God thinking about man and creating him in the spirit in Genesis 1 and 26. But you see the physical manifestation of man. Man. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 through 7, you see God talking about forming man from the dust of the ground. And he took man and he grabbed the dust of the ground. He formed man. Whew. I'm going to tell you why it's good. Because everything that God created, he created with his words. He created the sun, the moon, the stars. He created the ferments. He created the creeping things. He created, he created everything that was in the earth at that point before he decided to create man. He had created it with his words. He, he spoke it, and there it was. He spoke it, and it came to existence. He spoke the sun and the moon and stars into existence, and there they was. But when it came to making you, because you have so much purpose, because you have so much that he placed inside, he could not just speak you into existence. He actually had to touch you. Oh. He had to touch you because you're that special. He had to touch you because you're that unique. He, had to, he, he broke the mold when he made you, boo. There was nothing in the earth that could be created like you. That's why you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, my goodness. So if you've ever had self-esteem issues, I need you to understand that you were created in the likeness and the image of God. And so when you look at yourself, you're actually not looking at yourself. You're looking at the likeness and the image of God. So you need to fall in love with your hips, your lips, your fingertips, and everything else that God gave you. Because you're made in the likeness and the image of God. Somebody say amen. So we understand that, and then we also understand that God created us with a purpose in mind. He created us with purpose in mind. We go to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. What does it say? Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Ooh, that's good all by itself. That'll preach all by itself. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. I need you to understand that God, your God is a bad mamma jamma. He has the ability to form you and make you into something before you ever came into knowledge that you were anything. Oh, this is some good stuff. I need you to understand that there is already something amazing that God has already created you to do in this time frame that you're spending here on earth. I need you to fall in love with the fact that there is already something that God has made you to be and to do in this earth. And it is your job to find that purpose by which he has created you for and walk in your destiny. Oh, this is some good stuff. See, this should change the way that you eat and the way you live your life because now your diet should come in alignment with your destiny. Ah, 
See, you ought to be able to look some stuff in the face and say, that's not in my diet because that's not leading me towards my destiny. I can't be that way because that's not who God called me to be. I can't think that way. That's not who God called me to be. I can't operate that way because that's not who God called me to be. I'm made in the likeness in the image of God. And if I'm made in the likeness in the image of God, that means I have the character of Christ. And if I have the character of Christ, I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. So I think we all agree. I think that there is a census, a consensus in the room that that everyone in here has been created for purpose, has been designed by a very unique and articulate and amazing creator called God that you did not just evolve from pond scum or trilobites, uh, but you are actually created in heaven, thought about in heaven, downloaded down through heaven into your mother's womb and out of your mother's womb into the earth. Can we just agree right there? Can we just agree right there? Okay, so since we have that agreement and that God created you, and if he created you with, oh, this is good. If God created you with his hands, that means he's got something for you to do with your hands. I need you to understand that God made you for purpose. Ah, this is so good. I, I'm trying, Holy Spirit. And so if he created you for purpose, there are some very unique gifts that we speak about here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that help you flow in your purpose, that help you obtain the purpose by which God created you for, that help you walk in the purpose by which God crafted you in. That means that there is, a, there is already a set, a skill set. There are, there, are, there are these things inside of you that God has placed there that he wants you to utilize in order, to, in order for you to fulfill the purpose by which he created you for. Uh, this is good. See, this is a different way of thinking. This is bigger than just, what degree plan am I going to go with? OMG, let's see. Should I, should I do this one? I don't know. I should do that. No, 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 no. There is something beyond just education that God is trying to do in your life. There is something beyond just the house and picket fences that God is trying to do in your life. There is something beyond a six-figure salary that God is trying to do in your life. And what he's trying to do in your life has a lot to do with what he's already pre-planned for you in heaven, that he's already already created your destiny. The Bible says that the steps of a righteous man have been ordered by the Lord. That means that every every little step I take, you will be there. Every little, yeah, we'll be together. I can't sleep at night because I'm being nagged by my purpose. I can't sleep at night because I realize that God created me for something more than just meaning relation, meaningless relationships. I can't sleep at night because I know that every person that I come in contact with, that I've wasted time and effort and money with, these were not people designed to help me move towards my purpose and my destiny. And if you agree with that, then that means that you've got some gifts that live on the inside. The Bible says that there is treasure found in earthen vessels that we must uproot, that we must dig up, that we must come into contact with. There is some, oh, this is good. God wants you to shine bright like a diamond because there's something buried on, there's some treasure buried on the inside of you that you have to come into knowledge of. And so I came to give you a treasure map today to help you find that hidden treasure that God has placed on the inside of you because you can't leave this room without understanding that there's some treasure that you've got to go find. And if you don't find it, you can't fulfill the purpose by which God has called you for. I love the treasure hunts. When they go on the treasure hunts, it just gets better and better as the story unfolds. And they go from one clue to another clue to another clue that leads them to the action treasure and the moment they find the treasure is actually the highlight of the movie and they find it and it's always more than what they think it is so let's talk about these gifts can we do that so let's talk about how to find this hidden treasure that God has given you and, and these gifts that he's talking about here in first Corinthians chapter 12 y'all thought I forgot about the text right back to the book I was taught well so let's talk about finding gifts and how we can find them. Number one, the first, the first thing I want you to write down is you got to find your gift. Find your gift. Can I ask you something? What gets you passionate? What motivates you? Okay. 
What inspires you? What wakes you up better than a cup of coffee in the morning? What gets you more excited than espresso? What gives you wings without drinking Red Bull? <laughs> Whatever that might be, it might be a context clue to the gift that God has placed inside of you because God could be trying to help you understand that the thing that he's giving you passion for is the thing that he's giving you a gift to operate. Oh, this is good. Well, I don't know what it is about this 12 o'clock service. They're pulling something out of me. There is some hunger in this room. See, God is trying to get your attention because he can't allow you to live in this earth and not discover the gift by which he's placed inside of you that he wants to operate through the power of the Holy Spirit. And see, this is why I call the message auto-tune because the Holy Spirit wants to auto automatically bring you in alignment with the purpose by which God has created you for. That is his job to help you identify these gifts and these talents that he's placed inside of you so you can fulfill your purpose while you're here on the earth. Somebody say amen. What, what, what gives you, what frustrates you, what agitates you, what gives you misery? Because oftentimes your ministry can be found in what your misery is. Don't believe me, my mother was a drug addict and a prostitute from the time she was born until, she was, until I was about 12 years old. She went to prison, got saved, gave her life to Jesus behind bars. They, they satellited in a message of Jesus Christ by, by way of Bishop Jakes during, during a, a Woman Thou Art Loose conference. She said yes to Jesus. She's radically saved and gave her life to Jesus. And when she gets out of prison, she goes back into the streets by once she used to work in. She goes back to the motels that she used to turn tricks in. And now she's on a mission to save women out of the life of prostitution. She's on a mission to do something to change the trajectory of other women's lives because that that used to be her misery, but now her misery has become her ministry. I came to tell somebody at Brave Church that the thing that bothers you might be the thing that God calls you to. He might have called you to become the solution to the sound ministry because you don't like the way stuff, you pick up on stuff other people. He may have called you to be in the children's ministry because every time you go over there, you see something that's slightly out of place or something that catches your attention. He may have called you to be in the parking lot. So that's why you get mad at the parking lot people because they're not turning people in the right direction. There's too many people going left. You should have the same amount of people going right. If you have the same amount of people going right, then maybe we could do this all the right way and we could go through fast. Pastor, maybe, maybe, just maybe that might be your ministry. Maybe God has gifted you to be in that role. Look at your neighbor and say, what has God gifted you to do? See, some of y'all, not, you're not going to be blessed because you're not even listening to the pastor right now. You're just looking me square in the face. I'm not going to say nothing to my neighbor at all. <laughs> nope, not at all. Not today, Pastor. Just not going to obey Jesus today. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do, and that's just what I came to do in Jesus' name. But God is, God wants to bless you, and if you just listen to the man of God and just follow suit, I promise you we're going to go somewhere that God's going to do something. He's going to stir up the gift of God that's inside of you, and you're going to be activated. And this is going to be a day you're going to mark in history to say, I stepped into my destiny, and I walked into the plan that God had for me. And now this day, because this day happened, it changed everything. And now I'm serving at my church. Now I'm serving in my community. Now I'm serving in my home. Now I'm serving on my job. Now I'm serving at my campus because God did something on the inside. Tell your neighbor and say, God is doing something in me. Oh, y'all, y'all much better that time. Let's see. That was the right neighbor. The last one was the wrong neighbor in Jesus name. Second thing I want you to take a look at is you got to grow in your gift once you've discovered it. Growing in your gifts. Now, this is the challenging part. I I, I did a lot of of fun and humor up front because I'm about to punch you in the mouth right now, okay? (laughs) I'm from the hood, I punch well. My punches land exactly where I want them to land in Jesus' name. And so I I I wanna challenge you a bit. 
because I really want to help you in the process of growth and the gift that God has helped you to discover that's within. Because it's not enough to just discover the gift that God has given you if you're called to be a prophet, if you're called with, he, with the gift of healing, if you're called to, to work miracle signs and wonders, if you're called with the spirit of discernment, if you're just called with the spirit of, with the ability to speak in tongues or discern tongues, if you're called in the area of faith and you have that gift, there's a way that you grow that gift gift. And here's how you grow something. You need three different things to grow a seed. And let me help. Let me see here. What, what do you need to grow a seed? Scream at me if you know. You, you need water. Ooh, somebody say water. You need water, pastor. Water, water, and more water. Water is essential if you're going to grow a seed. Give me something else. What else you need? Good. Hey, my man said good soil. He didn't just say any kind of soil because you could be pointed, you could be planted in the wrong soil and not grow efficiently because you didn't put yourself in enriched soil that is good actually for you to grow. So sometimes it's not just about the seed. You got to make sure you find the right soil to be planted in. I believe that Brave Church is good soil to be planted in, and that's why God has you here because this is a place that's going to challenge you to grow like never before, and this is soil that's good that's going to nourish your soul and help you grow in your gift. So we need soil. We need water, and then we need something else. Light, sunshine. Somebody say sunshine. So let's think about this spiritually. You need, you need, you need, you need, you need dirt, good dirt. You need water, and then you need sunshine. Hmm. You need dirt to grow your gift. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to get dirty. Oh, y'all like that one, eh? Yeah, time to get dirty. <laughs> Come back, Holy Spirit. Stay right here. <laughs> David was dirty when they called him in to be anointed as the next king. He had dirt all over him because he was out keeping the sheep. He had dirt all over him because he was out serving. Oh, this is good. He was out serving and doing something that wasn't absolutely his end destiny, but he was serving, so he was getting dirty. Oh, this is good right here. I like people on my team in Tampa who like to get dirty because that's the season we're in right now. You got to be a little gritty. You got to be a little grimy. You got to be willing to move some stuff. You got to be able to pick some things up. You got to be willing to do something that you don't necessarily feel called to do, but it's just needed to be done, and if I'm standing in front of it, I'm going to find a way to do it. Somebody say amen. amen. So David is serving He's, he's out with the sheep, and, and they call him in. They said, hey, you're the next king of all of Israel. Lift up your hands. Receive the glory. Samuel pours the oil on his head. Oh, see, oh, see, see, oh, see. The Holy Spirit comes upon David's life. He becomes this amazing man of God, and everybody knows he's going to be the next king. In front of his brothers and his father who forgot about him, God affirms him in front of everybody. This is what I preached last time I was here, if you weren't in the room. I'm not going there. Where I am going is that David took his anointed self right back out in the field and kept keeping those sheep. Oh, I knew I was going to get just six amens right there. See, because we want appointing and anointing all at the same time. Anoint me. I see my gift. I've discovered it. Let's go. I'm ready to get after it. Let's do this thing. But can I tell you, sometimes the appointing comes much after the anointing. See, the anointing falls in a service like this where God helps you to discover a gift that he, gave, he puts inside of your life through the teaching of the word of God. And sometimes he will anoint you for something that he will appoint you for much later. And so the reason he didn't put you in the position where you can actually walk in your anointing now is because you don't know enough to walk in your anointing yet. <laughs> Joseph had a dream of being large and in charge and saving his entire family. But that's not where he went as soon as he had his dream. Joseph learns his dream, get pushed into a pit. He gets sold into slavery. He gets thrown into prison. And then finally he gets into a position where he can save his own family by being second in charge in all of Egypt. But it took some time before Joseph got there. He had to do some dirty work. I love it. Where are my dirty workers at? Where are my people who will stack chairs? Where, where are my people who will work in the kids' ministry? Where are my people who will serve on the sound ministry team? Where are my 
people in the parking lot. Those are my favorite dirty workers right there. The parking lot people who have an anointing to park angry people. That ain't my parking spot. That ain't where I park on Sundays. Ma'am, please, I'm just trying to serve Jesus. Can you please go left or right right here? Can we just get you to just go left or right, ma'am? Now, well, praise the Lord. That's, that's dirty work right there. That's, that's what I'm talking about. And what I'm truly talking about is being anointed and not being arrogant. I didn't say this in the first service. I'm saying that when you get dirty and you put yourself in the dirt and you plant yourself there, I'm saying that this is a season where you're okay with not being seen because a seed doesn't get to be seen when it's buried in the dirt. I love it. See, you got to go through a season where you're not being seen and celebrated for everything you do. Do we really have to clap for you every time you do something great? Do we really have to make sure that you know that we saw you? And see, this is how God will do it. Before I was ever preaching the gospel, I was miming the gospel and with no words. Y'all think I'm joking. I had a white face with white gloves, and I was to music behind me. And I often ask God, why did you have me do that before I did this? And he said, because I needed you to shut your mouth. And I need, ooh. I needed you to close your mouth so I could open mine. And if you would be quiet long enough, I would show that the anointing could move outside of your mouth opening because the power comes from me and not from you. Oh. And this is what happens when you bury yourself is you say, Lord, I'm willing to submit to a process of growth and development where I can stay planted long enough and get rid of my arrogance and get rid of my childhood traumas and deal with my issues before I walk in the anointing and the gift that you've given me so that I don't mess up that gift and I don't frustrate the gift of God that he's placed inside of me because what he's called you to do is so important that he can't allow you not to develop it before you walk in it. Oh. You need water? Somebody say water. water. You need water. Water is washing. Wa water means that I'm going to continually put myself in a position where I'm being washed by the word of God. I'm allowing conviction to hit my heart as I serve in my gift. Because an unconvicted person that has a gift becomes prideful and arrogant. And they flow in the gift and they think it's them. Sheesh. Yes. Y'all got it over here. They said, sheesh. I need you to understand that every time you serve in your gift and you walk in humility and you live a life that is repentful and you say, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, without you, I can't do this. Lord, without you, I can't walk in this gift. See, this is different than the world. You don't, you get a gift in the world and you just, ha <laughs> look what I did. Ha <laughs> look at my degrees. Look at what I did. I got a promotion. In the kingdom, the way up is down. And so the way I stay down is the way I continue to wash myself in the word. I continue to get before the word and allow it to cleanse my heart and purify me so that I can walk in my gift the right way. So we need water. And then last but not least, we need, what is the last one? Sunshine? We need S-U-N, shine, right? Sunshine. The light helps you to grow. What if we change that U to an O? S-O-N, shine. Oh, you need the light of Jesus shining on you constantly. You need, listen, if you do, if you work your gift in any other name but the name of Jesus, it is powerless. We serve at his glory. We serve for his glory. We serve to make sure he gets glory from the gifts by which he's given us. And the moment we forget that the power that we walk in is through the name of Jesus. See, the Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. The Bible says at the name of Jesus, you shall cast out demons in my name. The Bible says in the name of Jesus, they went and declared the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. The 
Bible talks about how the power of the name of Jesus does something that your name cannot do. Oh, that means Eric's name can't do it all by itself. That means John's name, you can't do it by yourself. But when you come in the name of Jesus, something happens in that situation that transforms everything. And so when you walk in the gift of healing and you lay hands on somebody and I say, I declare your healing in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on. When you speak a miracle over somebody's life and you say, be healed, or you say, this situation changed in the name of Jesus, it brings on a whole new power into it. Because Jesus, the name of Jesus, is the name that we should be flowing in our gifts with. Somebody say amen. amen. My last point, I'm going to skip my third point because I want to go to my last point because I want to make sure I have time. Number three was submit your gift. I just want to give you that. Just number three, write it down. Submit your gift. You got to be submitted with your gift. You can't just go out and just do things on your own in the kingdom. You got to be under someone's authority. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm going to let that marinate and move on to four because I want to have time because we got another service to come. But I, I want to make sure you get this last point because it's important. I, I, the fourth thing that you do. Okay, first thing is, 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 is finding your gift. Second thing is growing in your gift. Third thing was submitting your gift. And the fourth thing is stirring your gift. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody say stir it, up. stir it up. Come on, worship team. I need you guys behind me right now because this is a moment in the service where I just feel like the power of the Holy Spirit is going to stir something in you. I, I believe you came today expecting God to do something in your heart that God is getting ready to stir. Let me give you some biblical context. See, this is this is Peter speaking to, this is Paul speaking to one of his disciples, and he's talking to Peter, and he's saying some things. This is really good. I need you to hear some. I'm Timothy, he's speaking to Tim, Timothy. I'm sorry. Paul speaking to Timothy, and he's saying some things to Timothy. Timothy, that I want to say to you, because I believe that if you are gifted, I believe that if you are anointed, I believe that if you are, and if you have a gift that God has given you, and you've discovered that, and you've come in agreement with that today, I believe the last step that's going to that's gonna take you over the top is being stirred. Somebody say amen. amen. Second Timothy, verse 1, 6, verse 6 through 7, this it says, this it says, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. I always hear verse 7 quoted, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. But I never hear 6 added with 7. 6 and 7 go together. Don't forget about the stirring that happens. The stirring of your gifts. Listen to this. This is what this says. I remind you to stir up the gifts of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So this is the doctrine of laying on of hands and the significance of it. The Bible is telling us that something happens when you come into an alignment with the gift that God has placed on the inside of you. And some spiritual leader in your life declares over you and comes in agreement with what God is doing in you by laying their hands on you to stir up the gift of God. You see, when I, when I came into Jesus, I was 15, I was a knucklehead, I was a bad boy, and I used to do crazy stuff. I was the kid that would pull the fire alarm in the middle of the service. They knew it was me. They knew it was me. I was the one distracting people in service. They knew it was me. They knew it was me. I was the one making weird noises and all kinds of stuff in the service because I, I wasn't there for Jesus. They knew it was me. They knew it was me. And then finally on July 7th, 1999, they, something happened in the service. They were preaching about the prodigal son. And the whole service was about the prodigal. And I, I finally heard a voice from God. Finally, something got through to my heart in that service that had not gotten through before. And something hit me. Something changed me, Pastor. Something, something, something erupted on the inside of me that I cannot explain to you. And I was the first one to the altar call when they opened up the altar for salvation. And I was the first one there. And I remember falling to my knees 
opening my hands and saying, God, I'll do what you want me to do. I can't believe you would love somebody enough to still walk to the end of the road and still look for them after they swandered everything you gave them. That's me, Lord. I saw myself. And in that moment where I saw myself, I remember the Holy Spirit coming over me. My pastor began to pray. He pulled out some oil, some anointing oil. Yeah, that oil that flowed in the book of First Samuel chapter number 15, where David is anointed with oil. Oil is a representation of the Holy Spirit. And so oil was applied and they laid hands on me in that service and something changed in my life that I cannot explain to you except this scripture here. As the Bible says that the gifts of God were stirred up on the inside of me and I began to grow in my gift like never before. I went back to school because I didn't know how to read and I told a teacher named Mrs. Fraley that I needed to learn how to read and she taught me hooked on phonics because my gift was stirred. I went to before school, after school, and summer school because my gift was stirred. I started growing in my relationship with Jesus because my gift was stirred. I started serving in my youth ministry. I used to show up early to stack chairs because my gift was stirred. And after he stirred me, something changed in my life that activated me towards my destiny and me moving in my gifts and growing in my gifts. Everyone standing, eyes closed, head bowed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Holy Ghost coming for somebody today. Bring me that oil. Thank you. Give me that oil. Thank you. Today, this altar is open for the gifted. I came for the gifted and talented today. Today, as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, I want to ask you, is the Holy Spirit prompting you right now? You, you feel this unsettled feeling inside of you that's like, man, I got to do something better with my, I got to step into purpose. I got to step into my, I got to step into my gift. I got to start serving. I got to start doing something with what he gave me. If that's you and you're in this room while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, I just need you to raise your hand at me. If that's you, raise a wave at me. Just where I see two hands up. That's just to say, that's me. I, I need this thing today. I need this thing. In, I need to be stirred. I, I'm ready to walk in my purpose. I'm ready. I need you to take that hand and meet me at this altar. Just move move right now. I dare you to move. I dare you to meet me at this altar. I just feel like God's going to stir somebody like never before. I just believe this is what you've been waiting on. This is what you've been coming to church asking God, what is my purpose? What is my destiny? How do I walk in that purpose? How do I walk in that destiny? How do I fulfill what he created me for? How does he, how do I do this, Lord? Help me, help me, help me. You've been asking God to teach you and show you and help you. Today, he brought you help. Today, he brought you some help. Today, you're going to learn how to grow in your gift. Today, you're going to learn how to walk in the anointing that God has placed in your life. Today, I'm going to lay my hands on some people at this altar and we got some prayer partners around here too. I'm going to put oil in their hands and I'm going to anoint their hands and we're going to go to work at this altar and let me tell you what's going to happen. We're going to lay hands on you and we're going to believe in the doctrine of laying on of hands. We believe that the Holy Spirit is going to swoo. We're going to believe that the Holy Spirit is going to stir in you like never before and something's going to come over you that's going to possess you towards purpose going to possess you towards destiny in the name of Jesus. Come on. I need some people in this room that already have your gift, that are already walking in the anointing that God has called you to walk in, to just begin to pray in the spirit. Just begin to pray. Come on. I need everybody in here praying. I need every. I need everybody focused on what God is getting ready to do in this moment. Come on. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. I need you to pray like it was you when you got a hold of the Holy Spirit, when he got hold of you and, and started activating you towards your destiny and towards your purpose. Come on. Come on. Christ is my firm foundation. Christ is the rock by which I stand. Every, when everything around me shakes, I know that you won't shake, Lord. I know that you didn't bring me here to leave me. I know you didn't call me to this church just to be in this church and sit on the Christ sideline. Is this is, yes. That's it. That's it. That's it. You are the rock which I'm going to stand. When everything around me is shaking. Yes. Stir up the gift in the name of Jesus. Been more life than I put my faith yes, stir, stir. Oh. Come here, come here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Woo. Stir up the gift. In the name of Jesus, stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir it up. 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 Stir it up
Stir it up in the name of Jesus. Stir. Stir it up in the name of Jesus. I anoint you to be stirred in the name of Jesus. Flow in your gift. Flow in your oil. Oh, oh, fresh oil flow in your life in the name of Jesus. Come on, prayer partners. Pray. Pray like it was your child. In the name of Jesus. Stir. He won't fail you. Be stirred in the name of Jesus. Christ is my firm foundation. I'm going to do this in the name of Jesus. I'm going to flow in my gift in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray you stir the gift in the name of Jesus. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Hey. You were created for purpose. You were created for purpose. You were created for purpose. In the name of Jesus, you were created for purpose. In the name of Jesus, you were created for purpose. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes. He won't fail. He's got purpose inside of you. He created you for a reason. In the name of Jesus. He won't fail. Stir up the gift, Lord. Stir up the gift. He won't fail. Christ is my firm foundation. Christ is my firm yes. foundation. Yes. Stay right there. That's it. Stir it up. Stir up the gift in the name of Jesus. Stir it up. Stir. Stir, Holy Ghost. Stir it up. In the name of Jesus. Stir it up. I'm putting my faith in you right now, Lord. I'm trusting that you anointed me for such a time as this. I believe that there is an anointing on my life to serve. Stir up the gift in the name of Jesus. Stir up the gift in the name of Jesus. My God. My God. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Yes. Yes. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Yes, he won't. Stir her up in the name of Jesus. I gotta touch her. I gotta touch her. Excuse me. In the name of Jesus. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir it up. Stir it up in the name of Jesus. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir. Stir the gift. Stir up the gift. You were created for purpose. You were created for purpose. In the name of Jesus. Stir up the gift in the name of Jesus. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift, Lord. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. Sing this together. He won't. From the front of this church to the back of this church, lift your hands. He won't fail. Yes. He won't fail. If you don't know him, if you know he won't fail, I need every hand lifted as we close the service. Come on, if you need everything he has for you, lift your hands in this place. He won't fail. Yes. He won't fail. Yes. Christ is my firm foundation. Christ is my firm foundation. Come on, let's take it home. That's it. Come on. Get your praise in. This is it. The rock on which I stand when everything around me Final one. He won't fail. He won't fail. Come on.
lift your voice in this place if you believe he won't fail. Come on, lift your voice in this place if you believe he created you for purpose. Come on, lift your voice in this place if you believe he stirred your gift today. Come on, if you're watching online, just raise your hands wherever you're watching from. Just lift your hand. This is your moment. The Spirit of God that is here, I believe it's moving digitally to stir you up right there. The Holy Spirit that's moving in this room is moving right there in your living room. Right there where you're, wherever you're watching from. I need you to understand this is real. The power of God is real. What you sense in this room is happening right there in your room. Right now, I pray you stir the gift up between any person that's watching right now online. Stir it up in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for stirring us today. Thank you for auto-tuning our gifts. Thank you for helping us see that you created us with a big purpose in mind. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that every person in this room, as we close this service, Lord, I pray that they would leave with a diet for your destiny. Lord, let them hunger and thirst for righteousness. Lord, let them hunger and thirst to get plugged in and serve. Lord, I thank you. This, this is the moment that we make a choice to say I'm ready to go all the way in. What you put in me, what you placed in me, I will not live this life and not fulfill my destiny. Oh, I like that. I will not live this life and not fulfill my destiny. And I declare that there are prophets in this house I declare that there are healers in this house. I declare that there are miracle workers in this house. I declare that there are people that are full of faith in this house. I declare that there are people who speak in tongues in this house. Heavenly languages be released in the name of Jesus. I pray for a discerning spirit in this house in the name of Jesus. I pray. I pray for discerning of tongues in this place. I pray that all the gifts of God would be activated right here at Brave Church in the name of Jesus. This house will lack no gift in the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Someone lose your mind in this place. 